And then here you have the inguinal ligament. And that's going to go from the part of the pelvis here. You have the iliac crest. And then the inguinal ligament goes from the iliac crest over to the pubic bone here. So here's the other version, another picture of the same thing. So you have the external obliques. They run down in this direction. And then you have the internal oblique that most, a lot of it runs this direction, but as you get farther down, the fibers are going to change their direction. And then similar kind of thing happens with the transverse. Most of the time it runs transverse like that, but as you get up into here, as you get into, down into there, it has to fan out. So here's another version where we're looking at a transverse slice through here. Okay. So then basically with the rectus abdominis, the origin is going to be the pubic symphysis and the pubic crest. So it's down at the bottom. Okay. And then the insertion is going to be the xiphoid process and then the coastal cartilage is the, of the ribs up here. Okay. So that's more towards the center. And then, so that's in the center part right here. Okay, so you have the skin out here, then you have, which, which would this muscle be here? External oblique, right? So it's going to end at the border of the rectus, and then it's going to have this, contribute to this fascia that's going to surround the front of the rectus abdominis. And then you have the internal oblique, which in this case is actually in the middle layer. That's going to extend over to the fascia that's going to go on either side of the rectus. And then the transverse abdominis is going to go into the fascia that goes behind the rectus muscle. Okay. So it's like you have like this. You have the external oblique. Then you have the internal oblique that goes, the fascia goes on either side of it. The muscle bellies are here. Here's the external oblique that turns into this fascia. The internal oblique splits around the rectus, and then the transverse goes into the fascia that goes behind. So the uh, internal oblique splits on either side of the rectus. Okay. And then that fascia unites around the, in the center here. Because the, the, there's two rectus muscles that goes along the side here. And that fascia unites in the middle. So each one of these two recti muscles are enclosed in their own sheet that goes up and down like this. Is, is the fascia fibrous? Is it it's connective tissue. It does have fiber in it. But it's basically it's like, it's, uh, in this case, it would probably it would be dense, regular connective tissue. Because the fibers, it's, it, it has to withstand force in a certain direction. So it's like tendons, it's like a flat tendon. Right? Tendons are like ropes where the fibers run all in the same direction. But in this case, it's like you took a rope and rolled it out flat. So it's a sheet that has fibers that run in a specific direction because they need to transmit force. Okay? Whereas other things like a synovial membrane, the fibers can run every which way. So that's where you have dense, irregular connective tissue. Uh, so then external obliques, they're going to come from fleshy strips from the lower eight ribs. And then they're going to insert anteriorly to an aponeurosis in the linea alba. And that's where this area here eventually goes all the way to the linea alba in the middle. Okay, so the external oblique is actually coming all the way to here. So that's its insertion right there. So it inserts right into the midline. Going from here, from the ribs, all the way across to the midline. And in the process, it's jumping around the rectus abdominis. So these ribs all do kind of a similar, I mean, these abdominal muscles do similar types of things. It's going to rotate the trunk if one side acts, it's going to flex the abdomen, it's going to increase pressure in the abdomen. And then you have the internal obliques, and that's going to come from the lumbar fascia, the iliac crest. It's more or less 
originating down here, and then it's going to come up like that. Okay. So it's going to go into that same linea alba, and then it's going to go into the pubic crest. That's the part, again, that some of it fans downward. Most of the fibers are going to run up like this, but some of them do go downward like that, going to the pubic crest. And then again, it's going to go into this linea alba by way of going around the rectus abdominis. And then you have the transverse abdominis, which is the deepest one. And that's going to come all the way from the inguinal ligament, the lumbar fascia, some of the last six ribs. And it's coming from around the back, around to the front like this. And it's going to originate in the same thing, the linea alba, and then also the pubic crest down here. So they all end up going onto this line in the, in the center. Some of them split and the fascia goes behind the rectus abdominis. Some of the fascia goes around the front. And then the action is going to be to compress the abdominal contents. So this is basically a summary of the, all of what we talked about all the months. You right? can go through and name all those, then you can go home. So what's this going to be right here? Okay. And then what's this one going to be? Okay. And then this one? Internal, so you can see that it splits around. And then what's this line down the middle? Okay. And then what's this one? And then what's this cavity in here? Uh, well, that would be more the abdominal cavity. It should probably be the peritoneum. And then what's this? Okay. So we didn't talk about this one yet. That's the iliopsoas. Okay. And then these are going to be the different rectus spinae muscles, the different layers in here. When we're talking in the deep, deeper layers here is going to be more of the rotators, right? The uh, inner transverse being here, the inner spinous the rotators longus and gravis and the multifida. So those are way deep into here. And then here we're getting into the rectus spinae. 